So we're back in my garage and today I'll be making a sous vide immersion box. It's quite simple to make, I think, um, expensive to buy if you want one ready made. Today what I'm doing is using a, a normal uh, plastic storage box which you can find in any DIY store. But this particular one is uh, reinforced um, or strengthened. Um, as you can see at the bottom, you've got some kind of webbing. It's actually uh, the plastic uh, when it was cast, um, which provides extra strength on the floor of the box. And also the sides, uh, the walls of the box are also reinforced, as you can see. It's not a cheap item, this particular box. Um, cost me about £12, so you can obviously get a lot cheaper. Um, they go from five pounds upwards, but those are just plain simple storage box. They're not reinforced or strengthened in any way So I'm using this particular box a couple of reasons why it's the right um, uh, Holds the right amount of water this particular box as you can see um, There uh, would hold 35 liters uh, in capacity uh, Obviously, it's not gonna be full to the brim um, you'd need to obviously uh, read the specifications of your, of your sous vide unit to know how much water it needs to be immersed in. But this particular box seems to uh, be ideal um, in that obviously the, the sous vide unit um, sits in one corner. Um, I also have a lid that comes with the box. Um, as yet, I've, I've only just marked it out as to where I'm going to have the cutout um, so that the lid sits properly on the box. But um, yeah, it sits nicely, um, rigid, um, and it's also got handles on the side should you wish to lock or should you wish to lock it. Um, obviously, probably not necessary. Um, so I'm going to, I've already, like I said, I've already marked out where um, the cutout needs to be for the CV unit to go through. You can, as you can see, I've got my drum, uh, Dremel, um, which I'm going to do the cutting with, and then obviously smooth off any rough edges. Um, I've also got a um, rack, it's actually a trivet, um, a pot rack for hot pots and so on to place them while they cool, if, uh, you know, because obviously you don't want to put them on a, on a, on a surface which you'll ruin. So this is a, a very common pot stand, this particular one is from Ikea. And what I'm going to do later on, once I've done the box, is to actually cut it to size so that it sits inside the box uh, and the rack is where you will suspend the uh, the Ziploc bags with the contents in it while it's cooking uh, in, 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 in the container. Um, obviously the, the, the bags will be secured with um, clips of some sort um, to make sure that they, they stay where they, where they are. But um, that's probably what I'm going to use. You can buy the sous vide racks. Um, again, it's expensive. I mean, this particular rack is only about three pounds fifty from from IKEA, um, and it's stainless steel, so it's perfect. Yeah, it won't rust or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to hopefully, once I've got the box done, uh, measure the distance between the two edges. And the good thing about this box, it's got a it's got a lip on either side, on all four sides really, um, where any kind of rack um, can sit. And it won't interfere with the lid when the lid's placed on top. It, it should close perfectly well. Um, so it's, uh, that's one of the main reasons why I chose this box. Uh, obviously the, the sturdiness of the whole thing, because once the water heats up, um, the, the, the plastic does get warm. Um, and does tend to warp a little bit, not as much, but this particular box, as it's because it's strengthened, shouldn't do. You know, it's quite thick plastic, so there should be no warping or uh, you know uh, movement of any size on on the uh, um, on the box itself. So hopefully, yeah, that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, as I get each item done, we'll I'll come back on the video and and we'll I'll talk through it hopefully. So, see you in a so bit. we now have the cutout complete, all the way around, and smoothed off as well because I didn't want the CV unit to be scratched 
when the lid is taken off or replaced. It sits on the box. I've left a reasonable gap all the way around, as you can see, simply because uh, the unit does get uh, hot when it's switched on. And um, I didn't want the cutout too close in case it's, uh, it gets affected by the heat. But the lid's nice and firm on the box. And, uh, it's a job well done, I think. It does help having a lid um, on the box. Uh, obviously, if you don't have, um, if you're having a makeshift kind of um, setup, then you know you would suspend the sous vide unit in a in a, in a pot or uh, some other container. But with having a lid on um, the container itself, it does reduce heat loss, which is, I suppose, better for the machine in the long run. Um, hence the effort behind all of this. So the next stage now is to get the rack sorted for the box. Um, I'll be working on that now and uh, see how I get along. I'll see you in a short while. So I've got the rack set up now inside the box where we will suspend our Ziploc bags. And what I actually had to do was uh, cut the IKEA trivet um, or the pot stand up completely. Um, and I thought this would be a better way of doing it. And what I've actually done was lay the rods out evenly spaced within the box itself. Um, and they don't really move around, but they can be removed. So the way I've done it, if I can quickly show you, is that I took the Dremel and actually um, sort of made recesses at evenly uh, spaced intervals there. Uh, hopefully you can see them. And what this does is it's ideal for the rods to rest in like so. So then they don't move around so much. And I've done it on both sides, as you can see. And the good thing about this is that if you obviously are, are having, um, you know, guests around in larger numbers or you're cooking um, a lot of different things in, in the box and you would put all the rods in um, and obviously uh, cater to the quantity that you have. If you're just doing for one or two, um, uh, you know, uh, people or a smaller number, then obviously you can remove the number of rods and just have them set up like so. So I think it works out a lot, lot better. And when the lid is replaced, this is how it looks. Perfect. Worked out really well, I think. Overall, in terms of cost, um, I bought the container from Homebase, and that was twelve fifty, I think. Um, I then, obviously, if you work out the um, the pot stand from IKEA, that's about three fifty. Um, so we're looking at uh, sixteen pounds or thereabouts for the two items, and I think it's, it does a wonderful job. There you have it.